Hi, today I'm going to talk about the SpiderX from Data Color. Little disclaimer, I got this for free, I get to keep it, but I wasn't paid to do this review. So what I'm going to tell you here is all based on my personal opinion, what I think about it, and if it's good or bad. So let's get going right after the intro. Okay, so most of you might have heard that having a tool such as the Color Checker Passport by x right is great because it gives you awesome colors, it gives you the exact colors that you had on set, the reds are red, the blues are blues, the greens are greens, and so forth, and that is very important and great. But if you don't calibrate your monitor correctly, you might have different results from what you intended to have originally. Okay, so when you buy a new monitor, usually what is going to happen is that they will put the brightness almost to the max as a default setting. The reason and purpose for this is because it is brighter, nicer, more appealing, more sleek, uh, it looks good, and um, for everyday use, I, I think it's fine. You, you can use it that way. If you're gonna answer emails, if you're gonna browse the internet, or if you, you're just going to you know, uh, do anything on your computer. But when you start using your laptop or your desktop professionally, you want to make sure that the monitor that you're using is not too bright or that the brightness is not too dark either. Because if the brightness is too bright, then your photos will look dark. If the brightness is too low, then your photos will tend to look too bright. And that is not the result that you want to get. And that is why you would get a monitor calibration tool. So I'm going to show you how to use this tool and how to get the best results. Now one little tip here that I'm going to give you that might seem obvious to some of you, but not to others, is that there are two settings that you need to change on your Mac, if you're a Mac user, a laptop. The first setting is True Tone. This is a setting that adapts the screen colors and the, the temperature of the screen based on the surrounding light so that it looks a bit more uniform. Now, when you're editing photos, you don't want to have this on your computer. You want the monitor to stay the same and to not start changing and have different color temperatures because that's gonna throw off all the calibration that you do. So that's one setting that you need to change. The other setting when you're using a MacBook Pro, for example, like I do, is the brightness. You don't want it to be on auto because once again, if you have it on auto brightness, what it's gonna do is that it's gonna adapt. So if you have a little ray of sun coming in, or if you're having clouds outside the window, or if you turn on a light or turn off another light, it will start dimming the screen or making it more bright. And that again is going to change the way a photo looks versus another photo that you just edited just five minutes ago. So change those two settings before you start your calibration. Now, I'm gonna show you exactly the step-by-step -step on how to calibrate your monitor. Let's do it. Okay, so when you first open the box, you will find a sheet that gives you your license number. Uh, you go online, you register your SpiderX device and they give you a code. So you install the software on your Mac and you launch the SpiderX Pro. Okay, so when it opens up, it gives you a bunch of bullet points to check. First one is if your monitor has been warmed up enough, so for at least half an hour, you then have to check the lighting conditions. So here it says, have you checked that no intense light is falling directly on your display screen? So right now I have a little bit more light than I would want to have. I usually calibrate in a very dark environment, not to say completely dark, um, but try to be as accurate in terms of where you edit your photos. Now, as it says here, no intense light falling directly on your display screen. So make sure you don't do that. Now I need some light to show you the video, but otherwise I would not do this. Then um, you need to check the display controls and then you finally have to connect the SpiderX, which I plugged into the Mac. All right, then you need to identify the technology used in your display. In this case, it's a white LED, but you can check all the four different categories that it gives you here. And if you need further information, you can click down here. All right. Here you can choose if you want to recalibrate your display, if you want to check the accuracy of the current calibration, or if you want to do a full calibration. 
For this uh, purpose, I'm going to be doing a full calibration to show you how it works. You can adjust the length. One thing that you can do is tilt it a tiny bit like so, so that your device falls right onto the screen. Once you did this, you go on next, at which point you just have to wait for the calibration. Sometimes you will be prompted to lower the brightness or to increase the brightness so that you fall within the range that is optimum based on the light that you have around you when you're doing the calibration. One thing that I'm amazed with uh, this device is the speed with which it calibrates your monitor. Uh, compared to an old, say, Spider 5 or Spider 4, this is extremely fast. It used to take, I saw many reviews and uh, people complaining on, you know, taking up to half an hour, sometimes longer. In this very case, it takes about two minutes, uh, no more. So it goes through all the different channels, the red, the green, the blue, white, gray, black, to make sure that it calibrates your monitor properly. All right, once you're done, you simply remove the device and you say finish. One thing to make sure is that your screen is clean and that the device itself is as well clean so that when you put it on your monitor, you get the best readings possible. Put it back straight so you can see. There you go. So now you can save the profile. It prompts a name which you can use. So I'm going to save this. There you go. So now it's saved. You go next and here it shows you the before and after. Okay, so now I'm going to show you how this looks. This is the calibrated view and this is the uncalibrated view. Calibrated, uncalibrated. So you can see here in the uncalibrated version on the top corner here, when I switch, this is calibrated, this is uncalibrated. So you can see how it changes, how it makes the colors more dull, more soft versus what um, you had before. Same if you look here on this image, for example, you can see the reds, a little bit the blues, but mainly the reds they change a lot. So this is something um, actually very interesting and uh, that can really make your photos look how they should look. So if you need to add saturation, if you need to add any color intensity, you can do so and it will be more precise and look better as a final result. Okay, then you go on next and here it's gonna show you the sRGB, NTSC, Adobe RGB and P3. So you can see the different values. For example, here it says 88% of Adobe RGB, 86% uh, of NTSC and 100% of sRGB. And finally, you quit. Done. Your profile is now saved and you're good to go. So who do I think this device is for? I think this device is for everyone and anyone who considers himself a photographer, be that you're an amateur or professional. Why? Because from the moment that you will be sharing your photos outside of your computer, at that point you want to have a calibrated monitor. Now I did notice that the Mac monitors are good, they're very close to the results you get with the Spider X, but some monitors are not calibrated. They're not made for photo editing, so they will come out straight out of the factory and they're going to look nice and bright, but the colors are going to be totally messed up. Uh, for the details that you want to have on the photos. So, if you're a photographer, if you're someone who takes photos and that shares photos, I would highly advise to get this. It doesn't cost a lot of money, it's around $140, I think, and uh, you can get amazing results that will change the way your photos will look when you export them and when you print them. If you like my content, please consider subscribing. If you like this video, thumbs up and don't hesitate to leave a comment down below and let me know if you're also using a monitor calibration tool. And if so, which one? Until my next video, keep shooting, keep smiling, keep making amazing content, and I see you soon. Cheers.